Welcome to chapter 10, lipids. In this chapter, we will discuss representative lipids of different types that are organized according to their functional roles. And we will give special emphasis on their chemical structure and physical properties. Key topics that we will be discussing in this chapter are the structure and properties of storage lipids, membrane lipids, and signaling lipids. Lipids are a structurally diverse class of organic molecules. And these organic molecules are hydrophobic and have low solubility in water. Some of the characteristic examples are triacylglycerides and glycerophospholipids. The basic building block of these are fatty acids, as shown here. The other class of lipids are steroids and vitamins. We will discuss the physical properties of these compounds in the coming slides. Let's discuss some biological functions of lipids. They're used to store energy. This is because they are highly reduced compounds and they have lots of available energy. They are hydrophobic in nature and hence have good packing. They have insulation from environment. Because of their low thermal conductivity, high heat capacity and mechanical protection and specifically they can absorb shocks. They are good water repellents. Because of their hydrophobic nature, they can keep surfaces on, uh, of the organisms dry and they prevent excessive wetting in birds and prevents loss of water via evaporation. Lipids also form an integral part of the cell membrane and gives the shape of the cell. They are also part of cofactors for enzymes, for example, vitamin K and coenzyme Q. Lipids act as signaling molecules, for example, paracrine hormones, steroid hormones, growth factors, and other vitamins, such as A and D. They function as antioxidants, such as vitamin E, and pigments, color of tomatoes, carrots, pumpkin, and some birds are because of these pigments that are lipids. Shown here are two lipid-derived pigments. One of them is cantaxanthin, which is bright red in color, and the other one is zeaxanthin, that is bright yellow in color. Compounds with long conjugated systems absorb light in the visible region of the spectrum. Subtle differences in the chemistry of these two compounds produce pigments of strikingly different colors. For example, bright red for this compound and bright yellow for this compound. And if you can see, the subtle difference is uh, the compound with the bright yellow has a hydroxy, which is the compound with the bright red has a carbonyl group. Birds like these acquire the pigments that color their feathers red or yellow by eating plant materials that contain carotenoid pigments, such as the one with bright red or bright yellow. Now, you may remember or recollect this bird, the name of which is Eastern Goldfinch, and this is the official state bird of New Jersey and it is bright yellow in color. Lipids are classified based on their structure and function. Lipids that do not contain fatty acids involve cholesterol, terpenes, etc. Lipids that contain fatty acids, which involves complex lipids, can be further separated into storage lipids and membrane lipids. Storage lipids are neutral. For example, triacylglycerols. Triacylglycerol 
is a molecule that contains glycerol with three different fatty acids attached to it. Membrane lipids that are polar and sometimes negatively charged include phospholipids. Two different phospholipids are glycerophospholipids and sphingophospholipids. And they have glycerol with fatty acid and a phosphate and another functionality attached to it. In both these cases, the difference being that the arrangement of these fatty acids and also the way the molecule itself is being attached. Another membrane lipid is glycolipids. Again, there are some sphingolipids that are part of glycolipids that are attached to oligosaccharides or monosaccharides that form a part of glycolipids, and hence the name glycol. If you remember, we talked about glycolipids briefly in the carbohydrates chapter. Galactolipids or sulfolipids are another class. Again, the basic uh, backbone is glycerol here, but it may have a mono or disaccharide with a sulfate attached to it. Archaebacterial ether lipids. Um, the difference between these lipids and all the other lipids is the presence of an ether functionality. All the other lipids have ester functionality. To begin with, let's talk about storage lipids. The basic building block of storage lipids are fatty acids, and there are various different fatty acids that are present. Fatty acids are carboxylic acids with hydrocarbon chains containing between 4 to 36 carbons. These carbons, as you can see, are the various number of carbon atoms. Almost all natural fatty acids have even number of carbons. Please remember that. Most natural fatty acids are unbranched, saturated fatty acids have no double bonds between carbons in the chain, as shown here. Monounsaturated fatty acids have one double bond between carbons in the alkyl chain, as shown here. This is a monounsaturated fatty acid. And this is a monounsaturated cis fatty acid, as seen from here. Polyunsaturated means more than one double bond in the alkyl chain. Next, let us discuss fatty acid nomenclature. The standard nomenclature is that the number one be assigned to the carboxy carbon. The carboxylate has this first carboxyl carbon is usually represented as number one. The Greek sign delta to the power n is given to the, the number of the carbon where the double bond starts. For example, in this case, 18 is to 1 delta to the power 9, cis 9 octadecanoic acid. This means that this uh, specific fatty acid has 18 carbon atoms, as you can count from here. The number 1 starts from the carboxyl carbon. Now, 18 is to 1, the 1 indicates that there is one double bond. Delta to the power 9 indicates that the, the double bond is between carbon 9 and 10. Cis indicates the geometry of this double bond, geometric isomerism specifically, as compared to trans double bond. And again, octadecanoic acid means that it is a fatty acid with 18 carbon atoms. In case of a polyunsaturated fatty acid alternative, or it's called as PUFA, as shown in the bottom, the number one is assigned to the terminal metal carbon, which is called as the omega carbon. And omega minus N gives the side of double bond. And for an omega fatty acid like this, so this is icosapentanoic acid or EPA, as you can see here, the first number 20 means there are 20 carbon atoms. 
20 is to 5 means there are 5 double bonds and delta to the power 5 comma 8 comma 11 comma 14 comma 17 means the double bond positions are carbon 5 8 11 14 and 17 now um, unless and until stated these indicate cis double bonds in this case omega fatty acids are essential nutrients humans require the omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid called alpha linolenic acid this is because humans do not have the enzymatic capacity to synthesize this fatty acid and must therefore obtain it from the diet. From this polyunsaturated fatty acid, alpha linolenic acid, humans can synthesize two other omega-3 PUFAs, important in cellular function, and one of them being eicosapentaenoic acid, which is also an omega-3 fatty acid. Uh, the other omega fatty acid is um, docosohexanoic acid. The structure is not shown here. Um, so an imbalance in omega-6 and omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids in the diet is associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. So it is essential for humans to take to intake PUFAs in diet. Let us discuss some properties of naturally occurring fatty acids. Let us start with saturated fatty acids. The first column, as you can see, shows the carbon skeleton. It goes from 12 is to 0 to 24 is to 0. 0 indicates no unsaturation present in this fatty acid. 12 indicates the number of carbon atoms. And According to the number of carbon atoms, the name is also given to this fatty acid. For example, for 12, it is N-dodecanoic acid, and for 20, it is N-icosanoic acid. Just an example. The other thing that I want you to uh, pay attention to is the melting point and the water solubility. As the number of carbon atoms increase in the saturated fatty acids, the melting points also increase. As you can see, there's a steady increase of melting points. It's almost double as we go from 12 to 24. And these are experimental values. Let us consider the solubility. The solubility decreases. That is milligrams per grams of solvent. In water, 12, for 12 carbon uh, saturated fatty acid, it is 0 0.063, whereas for an 18 carbon fatty acid, it is 0 0.0034. And it is not even known for 20 and 24 carbon atoms because they're probably not soluble at all. Next, let us discuss the properties of unsaturated fatty acids. Starting from column one, let us discuss each of them. The number 16 indicates that there are 16 carbon atoms in this fatty acid, which is called a cis-9 hexadecanoic acid. The number one indicates that there is one double bond, and in parenthesis, delta to the power nine indicates a double bond is between carbon nine and 10. Unless and until specified that it is a trans fatty acid, all fatty acids with the parenthesis and delta sign indicate that they are cis fatty acids, as can be seen here. Now, as you increase the number of unsaturation, the numbers on the superscript of delta increases, as you can see. The other factor that I want you to pay attention is the melting point. As you increase the number of carbon atoms from 16 to 18, 
the melting point increases. That's what we saw in the previous slide for saturated fatty acids. Now let us see what happens if you increase unsaturation. Now let us compare um, row one, row two, three, and four, all three fatty acids with 18 carbon atoms, but increasing number of unsaturation, one, two, and three. As you can see, if you increase the unsaturation, the melting point decreases. And if you increase the unsaturation, even though if you're increasing the number of carbon atoms, the melting point has decreased substantially. So, and of course, the solubility in water is not considered at all because they are not soluble in water. This melting point is an important property, and we will discuss this in the upcoming slides. So, what did we observe in the tables that we looked at? Solubility. The solubility decreases as the chain length increases, and this was the case for saturated uh, fatty acids. Melting point. Melting point decreases as the chain length decreases. This is the case for saturated fatty acids. Melting point decreases as the number of double bond increases. This is the case for unsaturated fatty acids. Let us discuss the conformation of fatty acids. The saturated chain, as shown here, tends to adopt extended conformations, which means that it can adopt a straight conformation like this. The double bonds in an unsaturated fatty acid, like a cis unsaturated fatty acid, forms kinks. So as you can see, this shape is because of this cis unsaturation. And this is not present in saturated fatty acids, but only in cis unsaturated fatty acids. The saturated fatty acids, as shown here, pack in a fairly orderly way. That is because they have extensive favorable interactions. Whereas unsaturated cis fatty acids pack less orderly due to the kink. As you can see here, the red colored portion is where the unsaturation is. And as a result of that, the kink results in a less orderly fashioned packing. And this results in less extensive favorable interactions. It takes less thermal energy to disrupt disordered packing like this as compared to an orderly packing for saturated fatty acids. Thus, unsaturated cis fatty acids have a lower melting point because of this reason. Trans fatty acids are formed by partial dehydrogenation of unsaturated fatty acids. This is usually done to increase shelf life or stability at high temperature of oils used in cooking, especially uh, deep frying of these oils. A trans double bond allows a given fatty acid to adopt an extended conformation, just like saturated fatty acids. Trans fatty acids can pack more regularly and show higher melting points than cis forms. Consuming trans fatty acids, however, increases risk of cardiovascular diseases. It is because dietary trans fat can raise the level of low-density lipopolysaccharides and lower the level of high-density lipopolysaccharides. Important point. Hence, avoid deep frying partially hydrogenated vegetable oils. So, what we usually do in the current trend is reduced trans fat in foods. Triacylglycerols are another types of storage lipids. Majority of fatty acids in biological systems are found in the form of triacylglycerols. So triacylglycerols are made up of fatty acids. 
The solid ones are called fats and the liquid ones are called as oils. The primary storage form of lipids is body fat. They are less soluble in water than fatty acids due to the lack of charged carboxylate group. Remember, fatty acids have a free carboxylate. But lipids, but triacylglycerols, do not have. We'll see the structure of triacylglycerols in a moment. Triacylglycerols are less dense than water. Fats and oils float. Now, shown here is the structure of triacylglycerol. The structure of glycerol is this. It has three hydroxy group, and these hydroxy group are then modified or attached to fatty acids. They could be different fatty acids with different length and different unsaturation. And shown here is a mixed triacylglycerol named as one steer oil, two linol oil, three palmitoil glycerol. As you can see from this structure here, the, the first and the last one are saturated, whereas the one with the kink is the unsaturated fatty acid. Fats provide efficient fuel storage. The advantage of fats or polysaccharides is that fats or fatty acids carry more energy per carbon because they are more reduced. Fatty acids carry less water per gram because they are nonpolar. Polysaccharides or sugars like glucose and glycogen are for short-term energy needs, it means quick delivery. For example, a quick sprint, the body uses glucose. But if you want to go for a marathon, you better rely on fats for energy. Fats are for long-term month energy needs. Good storage, slow delivery. You can also go for fasting. Right? You can live for three days without eating food. The body can consume your fat and get energy from it. In vertebrates, specialized cells called adipocytes or fat cells store large amount of triacylglycerol is this fat droplets that nearly fill the cell. Shown here is a cross section of human white adipose tissue. Each cell, as you can see, contains a fat droplet that is white in color, that is so large that it squeezes the nucleus. And the nucleus is shown in red because it's stained and it squeezes the nucleus against the plasma membrane. And as you can clearly show, see here as to how it squeezes it. There are two types of adipose tissues. One is white adipose tissue and brown adipose tissue. The white adipose tissue, its primary function is to store energy. It also acts as thermal insulator and padding. It has a single large lipid droplet. On the other hand, brown adipose tissues are especially abundant in newborns and hibernating animals, such as bears. Its primary function is to generate body heat. It has many smaller lipid droplets and Brown adipose tissues have large number of mitochondria. Biological waxes are esters of long chain, saturated and unsaturated fatty acids with long chain alcohols. The structure is shown here. They are insoluble and have high melting points. They have a variety of functions. The first one is storage of a metabolic fuel in planktons, protection and pliability for hair and skin in vertebrates, waterproofing of feathers in birds, in lotions 
ointments and pollen. Beeswax is a mixture of many lipids. Triacontinyl palmitate, the molecule that is shown here, is a major component of beeswax. And this is an ester of palmitic acid with the alcohol triacontinol. The beeswax of the honeycomb, as shown here, is firm at 25 degrees Celsius and completely impervious to water.